Meet Joe. Joe is a freshman in college and has his whole future ahead of him. One Friday night, Joe went to a party where he met Flo. One thing led to another, and Flo went home with Joe. Little did Joe know that Flo had also been with Mo and Cho. Now Joe is feeling a little low because he got more than he bargained for when he slept with Flo. Let's talk about sex. More specifically, sexually transmitted diseases. Now as a student in college, how does this affect you? Think about this for a minute. As pleasurable as sex is, STDs are equally agonizing. As we will discuss, they can have lifelong implications. Let us look at some statistics. In 2018, there were 1,087,277 reported cases of chlamydial infection among persons aged 15 to 24 years representing 61.8% of all reported chlamydia cases. The rate of reported chlamydia cases among females aged 15 to 19 years was 3,306.8 cases for 100,000 females. Women aged 20 to 24 years had the highest rate of reported chlamydia cases, 4,064.6 cases for 100,000 females compared with any other age group for either sex. The rate of reported chlamydia cases among males aged 15 to 19 years, 959 cases per 100,000 males. As in previous years, men aged 20 to 24 years had the highest rate of reported chlamydia cases among all males, 1,784.5 cases per 100,000 males. Females aged 15 to 19 years had the second highest rate of reported gonorrhea cases, 548.1 cases per 100,000 females. Women aged 20 to 24 years had the highest rate of reported gonorrhea cases, 702.6 cases per 100,000 females. The rate of reported gonorrhea cases among males aged 15 to 19 years was 320.5 cases per 100,000 males. In 2018, as in previous years, men aged 20 to 24 years had the highest rate of reported gonorrhea cases, 720.9 cases per 100,000 males compared with any other age group for either sex. In summary, for chlamydia, rates of reported cases are consistently highest among females aged 15 to 24 years, while rates of reported gonorrhea cases are consistently highest among males aged 15 to 24 years. Chlamydia is a common STD that can affect both men and women. It can cause serious permanent damage to a woman's reproductive system. Now this can make it difficult or impossible for her to get pregnant later on. Chlamydia can also cause a potentially fatal ectopic pregnancy, which is a pregnancy that occurs outside the womb. And women, this is what I mean when I'm speaking about how STDs can have a lifelong implication. Most people who have chlamydia have no symptoms. If you do not have symptoms, they may not appear until several weeks after you have sex with an infected partner. Even when chlamydia causes no symptoms, it can damage your reproductive system. Women with symptoms may notice an abnormal vaginal discharge, a burning sensation when urinating. Symptoms in men may include a discharge from their penis, a burning sensation when urinating, pain and swelling in one or both testicles, although this is less common. Men and women can also get infected with chlamydia in their rectum. This happens either by having receptive anal sex or by the spread of another infected site, such as the vagina. While these infections often cause no symptoms, they can cause rectal pain, discharge, bleeding. And you should be examined by your doctor if you notice any of these symptoms or if your partner has an STD or symptoms of an STD. STD symptoms can include an unusual sore, a smelly discharge, burning when urinating, or bleeding between periods. Gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease that can infect both men and women. It can cause infections in the genitals, rectum, and throat. It is a very common infection, especially among young people ages 15 to 24 years.
You can get gonorrhea by having vaginal, anal, or oral sex with someone who has gonorrhea. A pregnant woman with gonorrhea can give her infection to her baby during childbirth. Some men with gonorrhea have no symptoms at all. However, men who do not have symptoms may have a burning sensation when urinating, a white, yellow, or green discharge from the penis, or painful or swollen testicles, although this is less common. And most women with gonorrhea do not have any symptoms. Even when a woman has symptoms, they are often mild and can be mistaken for a bladder or a vaginal discharge. Women with gonorrhea are at risk of developing serious complications from the infection, even if they do not have any symptoms. Symptoms in women can include a painful or burning sensation when urinating, increased vaginal discharge, vaginal bleeding between periods. Rectal infections may either cause no symptoms or cause symptoms in both men and women that may include a discharge, anal itching, soreness, bleeding, or painful bowel movements. I believe I would be doing you a great injustice in just speaking to these diseases without discussing the symptoms and showing you what to look for. There has never been a better deterrent than visual aid. What I'm about to show you is visually disturbing, but an all too real consequence of promiscuous sex. I would encourage you to hang around through the end of the video, but if you have a weak stomach or religious convictions, then you will want to shut the video off at this point. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection that can cause serious health problems if it is not treated. Syphilis is divided into stages, primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary. There are different signs and symptoms associated with each stage. You can get syphilis by direct contact with the syphilis sore during vaginal, anal, or oral sex. You can find sores on or around the penis, vagina, anus, rectum, on the lips, or in the mouth. Syphilis can spread from an infected mother to her unborn baby. During the primary stage of syphilis, you may notice a single sore or multiple sores. The sore is the location where syphilis entered your body. Sores are usually, but not always, firm, round, and painless. Because the sore is painless, it can easily go unnoticed. The sore usually lasts three to six weeks and heals regardless of whether or not you receive treatment. Even after the sore goes away, you must still receive treatment. This will stop your infection from moving to the secondary stage. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection, or STI. HPV is a different virus than HIV and herpes. There were about 43 million HPV infections in 2018, many among people in their late teens and early 20s. There are many different types of HPV. Some types can cause health problems, including genital warts and cancers, but there are vaccines that can stop these health problems from happening. You can get HPV by having vaginal, anal, or oral sex with someone who has the virus. It is most commonly spread during vaginal or anal sex. HPV can be passed even when an infected person has no signs or symptoms. Anyone who is sexually active can get HPV, even if you have had sex with only one person. You also can develop symptoms years after you have had sex with someone who is infected. This makes it hard to know when you first became infected. In most cases, HPV goes away on its own and does not cause any health problems. But when HPV does not go away, it can cause health problems like genital warts and cancer. Genital warts usually appear as a small bump or group of bumps in the genital area. They can be small or large, raised or flat, or shaped like a cauliflower. A healthcare provider can usually diagnose warts by looking at the genital area. HPV can cause cervical and other cancers, including cancer of the vulva, vagina, penis, or anus. It can also cause cancer in the back of the throat, including the base of the tongue and tonsils. Genital herpes is an STD caused by two types of viruses. The viruses are called herpes simplex virus type 1, or HSV1, and herpes simplex virus type 2, or HSV2. 
Other studies have found that genital HSV-1 infections are increasing among young adults. Increasingly common oral sex behavior among adolescents and young adults also has been suggested as a contributing factor. Oral herpes is usually caused by HSV-1 and can result in cold sores or fever blisters on or around the mouth. However, most people do not have any symptoms. Most people with oral herpes were infected during childhood or young adulthood from non-sexual contact with saliva. Oral herpes caused by HSV-1 can be spread from the mouth to the genitals through oral sex. This is why some cases of genital herpes are caused by HSV-1. Genital herpes is common in the United States. More than one out of every six people aged 14 to 49 years have genital herpes. You can get genital herpes by having vaginal, anal, or oral sex with someone who has the disease. If you do not have herpes, you can get infected if you come into contact with the herpes virus in a herpes sore, saliva if your partner has an oral herpes infection, or genital secretions if your partner has a genital herpes infection skin in the oral area if your partner has an oral herpes infection, or skin in the genital area if your partner has a genital herpes infection. You can get herpes from a sex partner who does not have a visible sore or who may not know he or she is infected. It is also possible to get genital herpes if you receive oral sex from a sex partner who has oral herpes. You will not get herpes from toilet seats, bedding, or swimming pools or from touching objects around you such as silverware, soap, or towels. Most people who have genital herpes have no symptoms or have very mild symptoms. You may not notice mild symptoms or you may mistake them for another skin condition such as a pimple or ingrown hair. Because of this, most people who have herpes do not know it. Herpes sores usually appear as one or more blisters on or around the genitals, rectum, or mouth. The blisters break and leave painful sores that may take a week or more to heal. These symptoms are sometimes called having an outbreak. The first time someone has an outbreak, they may also have flu-like symptoms such as fever, body aches, or swollen glands. People who experience an initial outbreak of herpes can have repeated outbreaks, especially if they are infected with HSV-2. Repeat outbreaks are usually shorter and less severe than the first outbreak. Although the infection stays in the body for the rest of your life, the number of outbreaks may decrease over time. You should be examined by your doctor if you notice any of these symptoms or if your partner has an STD of symptoms of an STD. STD symptoms can include an unusual sore, a smelly genital discharge, burning when urinating, or for women, bleeding between periods. Now, according to the Center for Disease Control, there's a couple different things you can do to avoid getting sexually transmitted diseases. And I quote, The only way to avoid STDs is to not have vaginal, anal, or oral sex. End quote. Their second quote here is, If you are sexually active, you can do the following things to lower your chances of getting sexually transmitted diseases. Now, the first, I believe, is the only option. That being, quote, being in a long-term, mutually monogamous relationship with a partner who has been tested and has negative STD test results, end quote. I believe that is the biblical picture of marriage. Jesus said, as recorded in Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Now the CDC website also lists a second option, and while I completely disagree with this option, I'm going to show it because it really shows the CDC's hypocrisy. And it is, quote, using latex condoms the right way every time you have sex, end quote. Now, I believe this is hypocritical of them because earlier they said the only way to avoid STDs is to not have vaginal, anal, or oral sex. Now, we know that abstinence is probably one option that's just completely off the table for most people. The good news is the biblical picture of marriage, that long-term monogamous relationship with one partner, 
Folks, if you get tested before you get married, both partners, and you're both in a monogamous relationship, and neither one of you cheats, then you're safe and free and clear of STDs. The Bible says this, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Now remember our friends Joe and Flo? Well, Flo paid attention closely to STD awareness. And when she met Joe, she said no. She shared her knowledge with Joe and her wishes to hold off until marriage. Now Joe is happy as Joe goes with the flow.